So let's start over with the uh, projections from the IEA. What did you make of it? But yeah, we're pretty much aligned with those views. I mean, the, the U.S. is now a powerhouse in production. Uh, production growth from the U.S. is going to break the dominate uh, oil production growth in the world. We will become a, a very powerful exporter. So just a question of the pace, you know, and you can debate the pace, but the, uh, the IEA's estimates are pretty close to our own, actually. From Conoco's perspective, when do you feel like production plateaus and at what kind of rate? I think that's a great question, actually, because depending on where you are in the life cycle of these unconventional plays, that becomes a sort of critical question. The way that what we like to do is to take a view of the full life cycle before we get started, so that we can understand what plateau are we heading for, what does that imply for infrastructure, what does it imply for the pace of the number of rigs you should run, and, and so on. Uh, and every play is in a different stage of the life cycle. For us, for example, our Bakken play is pretty much at plateau now. So somewhere between 80 and 100,000 barrels a day is what will probably stabilise Bakken. Uh, the Eagleford is still in the sort of what we think of as late stage growth. So it's got a few more years to go before we uh, plateau there. We don't know exactly where that will be, 250, 300, something like that. And then the uh, Permian is still in the very early stages for us. The, uh, we're still in the phase of working out, well, how should we drill these wells? Because our uh, philosophy is it's better to do it right than do it fast, you know, to make sure you're maximising value. So we're still in that early stage. So it's too early for us to establish what the plateau will be there. So let's, uh, let's talk about Eagleford for a second before we get to the Permian. So you're utilising gas injections there, right? right. How's that going? What are you noticing? Yeah, so there are parts of Eagleford. Most of our Eagleford doesn't need this, but there are parts of Eagleford that are shallower. And where it's shallower, it has less gas naturally dissolved in the oil. Uh, which you think, well, that may be a good thing because we want to sell oil, we don't want to sell gas. But it turns out if there's not enough gas dissolved in the oil, you get low compressibility and low recovery factors. So this is in the shallow parts of Eagleford. So what we're testing there is going back to producers and injecting gas into the produced production wells and letting it soak into the oil so that it swells the oil up and then we flow it back again and then we repeat that cycle. It's called huff and puff. The, uh, <laughs> a technical the, term. A technical term, huff and puff. So the, uh, and that, that's shown some promise. And, uh, now this is only for those parts of the Eagleford that are shallow, which maybe represents 10 or 15% of our Eagleford position. For others, it's more significant, I think. So then for the Permian then, I mean, what we're hearing from a lot of producers is that the way we're drill they were drilling wasn't working in terms of parent-child wells. So if you d right. drill wells too close together, right. and then you have to rethink the actual resource right. base that you can get out. Right. Where does Conoco land on that? Now, we, we've been anticipating this parent-child interaction for, uh, for a while. They, they, uh, we've designed our well spacing to minimize that. But we do have some uh, going on. So what we did is we hired 100 psychologists to counsel the parents and the children to try and, <laughs> to try and uh, they, uh, turned out that didn't work, you know, it was worth a try. So, so, so what we're actually doing is we're trying to find a technology solution there. And, uh, and we, we have a few that we're testing, some, some really interesting ones. For example, uh, in the Eagleford, we're testing a new vintage of completion we call a Vintage 5. It's the fifth one we've tried. And it's designed both to reduce uh, um, the interaction between the parent and the child and improve the recovery factor, get the, the amount of oil we get out of the child wells. So we've actually we ran two individual well tests in the Eagleford last year. They were very encouraging. This year we're going to run four multi-well pilot tests in the Eagleford and one in the Permian. Uh, we, we think this, this, this technology could solve two problems, parent-child interaction and the fact that in some parts of these fields we get lower recovery factors. So does that mean that you get to drill them closer and drill more wells then if you're able to use the technology? Potentially, that's where it leads to. Uh, but you certainly it changes the, the type of completion that you pump. Uh, it's quite radically different from what we're currently doing. Um, and we'll see, we'll see how that plays out. We're, uh, we're hopeful that it'll be the... Uh, it will be part of the solution at least to the parent-child interaction and to uh, improve an overall recovery from the wells.